welcome. We, uh, I think, are all in the midst of a leadership development seminar writ large on the national and international stage. And so I just want to illuminate a bit about what that's happening and then talk about the research we're doing about the changing nature of leadership. So in this leadership development seminar that we've uh, been witness to for the, one could say, for the last 16 years or the last um, three or four weeks, we've been shown many examples of uh, failure in leadership, culminating in the recent spiral of division and self-destruction followed by a leadership vacuum since the Brexit referendum. In this period, we begin the, the, the opportunity as part of our training and development in leadership to witness the use of divisive language, such as them and us, the feeding by many sides of a culture of blame, false promises based often on lies, the promoting of interests of subgroups at the cost of a wider system, the trading on fear, the going into battle, whether it be in Iraq, Libya, or the referendum debate, with absolutely no plan for what you're going to do afterwards. And finally, looking for a scapegoat. We've seen collective leadership failure, not just in government, and also British football, but also in business organisations, from banks to media, from BHS to Sports Direct. However, we cannot just blame leaders who are in the spotlight. We are all complicit in the system dynamics that produce such symptoms. We all have responsibility, and I would suggest that this crisis provides an opportunity for us all to develop our response ability, the ability to respond to a fast-changing world. The crisis, I would suggest, is also a rallying cry for the leadership development industry. And that includes business schools and us here at Henley. To take a hard and well-considered look at ourselves and what we're doing to prepare the leaders of tomorrow. And this is what the Henley's Tomorrow's Leadership and the Urgent Need for Today's Leadership Development is Research is all about. What we're doing is we're addressing four key questions. The first is, how will tomorrow's leadership need to be different from today's leadership? Secondly, what's the development that's needed today to adequately prepare the leaders of tomorrow? Thirdly, where, where can we find current best practice in leadership development? Where is it happening in the world? And fourthly, what more needs to be done urgently? As part of that research, what we're doing is we're interviewing CEOs, HR directors, and nominated by the leadership, the millennial leaders of tomorrow, leaders under 35, who, who the senior team say, these are people who will be running our company within 10 to 15 years. And, and interestingly, I think we've just passed the tipping point where the millennial generation that came of age in 2000 or afterwards are now more than 50% of the workforce. And uh, besides interviewing that triangle in 50 global companies, we were also doing a survey of the best three surveys we could find of each of those three groupings, the millennials, the HR directors, and the CEOs, as well as interviews with thought leaders in the, in the field across the globe. So it's a pretty wide-ranging research. And, and what are we beginning to find? Well, the CEOs are telling us the pace of change is unprecedented. You know, we've been talking about a VUCA, a volatile, unpredictable, complex, and ambiguous word for a long time. They're saying now it's actually happening for them. Digitalization and its impact, they are all saying is going to become an increasing challenge. And across all sectors, this was a surprise, we expect it in some sectors, but in all sectors, they're talking about the threat of disintermediation through new web-based companies, and how that might disintimate not just their, their, their company, but the whole value chain. Several of them talked about, you know, we're having to look at how we might be Uberized. This is a new word I've discovered. Uberization. They all talk about how do we find the right talent? 
How do we recruit it? How do we develop it? And that there is a still an enormous shortage of people who can work with the complexity of the stakeholder systems they're having to work with and the complexity of the change they're having to face. And they're talking about the, 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 the greater, despite what's happening locally, the greater interdependence of global systems and, and, and the complexity that brings with it. And the need to work in partnership across their organisational ecosystems. They talk, and here's a quote, the need to share, not control, the value chain. Many companies, we discovered, are the number of people they're employing is getting less, but the number of people they're having to work in partnership with is getting much bigger. So the research is also showing the need for us to move from leader development, based on competencies that made yesterday's leaders great, to leadership development, which is future-paced and is dealing with collective leadership, not just individual leaders. The need for leadership development to be linked both to, to current and future real organisational challenges, not yesterday's case studies, and to be integrated with the development of organisational development. The need, and this, this we found was quite new, to include stakeholders in both the design and the delivery of your leadership development. It's no good just to you know, invite the CEO in to launch the leadership development programme. You need to get your customers in there, your partners in the value chain, yeah? your investors. And for leadership development to be both personally customised and consistent, flexible and structured, Helping individuals combine coaching, mentoring, with wide experience and challenges both inside and outside their organisation, and stretch challenges which get them to go beyond their current way of thinking. Current leaders talk about the need for going well beyond resilience and the need to radically expand their bandwidth to cope with the world they're having to lead. This involves both skill and personal development, but this is no longer enough. Five years ago, I, I, I addressed, some of you may have been here, uh, the journalist group, and I talked around the headline, the heroic CEO is dead, long live the leadership team. Now, based on this research, I'd go further. And I'd say that tomorrow's CEO has not only got to build a team, a leadership team that is more than the sum of their parts, and that join the CEO in integrating the, the, the whole business, but they need to grow their bandwidth through effectively partnering with all parts of their stakeholder ecosystem so that they can lead a business that can do more at higher quality with less resources and importantly can learn and change faster than ever before. Thank you and I look forward to discussing this and what else is emerging throughout the day. Thank you very much. <laughs>